watercolour blending techniques for soft edges. That's what I'm going to show you how to do in this video. Welcome back to my channel. If we haven't met before, my name is Michelle. Do consider subscribing for art tips and techniques, particularly watercolour painting and drawing and business, social media and online selling for artists. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to soften an edge and blend it right out to nothing. So this is really, really useful and um, I'll drop some of my own paintings in here so you can see what I mean and the, uh, the times I've used these techniques. So this is really useful, especially for um, shadows on white paper. So these may be shadows from a still life, perhaps, that you're making. They also can be used very often in flower painting. So they're what you would use to uh, to make shadows sort of on petals, or you have a, maybe a hard edge on one side between the petals, and then the, uh, the petal sort of fades out to softness. Another way that you can use them is also for botanical painting. When you had, for example, because there's almost never hard edges within petals, so if you had a white petal with a blush of pink on one side, you'd be able to use this technique for that as well. And you can also layer this technique onto other colours. Now I'm going to show you three methods for, uh, for blending out edges. And uh, the first one is definitely the most useful and the easiest. So why am I showing you the other two? Because there are circumstances when you won't be able to use the first method. So all will become clear. I'm going to point the camera downwards now and show you how it's done. So we're looking down at my drawing board now. I have changed to um, the big overhead camera and I've changed microphones so there may be a slight difference in uh, in sound and visual quality and I'll be using a self-tracking lens so if it goes out of focus for a moment or two don't worry you'll soon come back into focus. Now I've drawn on this piece of paper some petal shapes because one of the uh, one of the things this technique is great for is for painting botanical subjects. But if you bear in mind that it's also really useful for painting shadows, especially shadows on white things like clouds and, uh, and like snow. So the first of the three techniques I'm going to show you for blending out edges is the easiest one and the one that I want you to default to. So um, it, wherever possible, I want you to use this method. Now, it won't always be possible and I'll explain why as we go along. But the first thing that I want you to do is to use this first method, which involves pre-wetting the paper. So here's our first petal. And what we're going to do is we're going to put clean water over all of this petal. So I've got some water here and a nice big brush. And I'm just going to paint water across this petal. Now the trick is to get lots of water on and to give it a good soaking but without leaving puddles. So it's really important that there aren't puddles either in any of the paint that you apply um, or the clean water. So what I'm gonna do, I've got some tissue paper, you can use a rag, is if there's too much water, I'm just gonna dry my brush and a dried brush will just sort of hoover up some of the water like this. So here's my petal and it's pre-wet and what I'm gonna do now is put some color on it. So I'm going to go on with some sort of dark red. I think this might actually be a um, madder brown that I'm using here, but it's a it's a very reddish colour. So I'm going on with the paint. Now the trick to this bit is that the paint you're applying should be probably a little bit drier than the surface of the water. What I mean by that is that if you've made the petal damp, and yet the paint you apply is drippy wet. It's gonna bleed right up. You won't have any control over it. It won't sort of stay nicely put like this paint here. And it's rather warm in here today. So I'm just going to just give that a little bit of help towards the edge there, just spread it a little bit. And there we go. So we've applied our red paint and we've got this lovely soft edge here, which is naturally what you find within petals. You hardly ever find a hard edge. Now this technique can be combined with another technique for applying watercolor pencils um, that I've got in an old video, and I'll link to that one um, up above. It is rather an old video. It's actually my most popular video, but the, uh, the lighting is, is appalling because I didn't know what I was doing at the time, but it's still a very good video to show you how to use watercolor pencils. Now the next petal I'm going to paint. I'm going to do the same thing but this time rather than um, applying colour we're going to imagine that this is a petal that's white 
but it's got some shadow at one end and if you're painting a white flower then uh, then that's how you sort of how you show the difference between one area and another is with shadows i've also got a video tutorial of painting a white flower which i'll uh, i'll link to above for you as well so here we are exactly the same water on there and then I've got some grey that I've pre-mixed. I'm giving it a stir because it's got ultramarine in, so it'll tend to separate a little bit because of those granular pigments and then I can just pop the uh, the shadow in there and I can take it as far up as I want to and you'll notice that even though I'm not going near the top of the petal I have actually wet the whole area and there's a couple of reasons for that. One being that water itself um, by itself can leave a mark and uh, the other being that it's it's easy to underestimate how far you need to take the water and just to go off the edge of the area. So if you're working in a small area, take the water out at least twice as far as you think you need it. And for a petal like this, you may as well just coat the whole petal in water. So that's our first method. So you wet the uh, you wet the area, significantly wet, nice and wet, but no puddles, and then you apply paint that's either the same amount of wetness or a little bit drier and then it won't go anywhere you'll just get that lovely soft blended edge. Now the good thing about this first technique is that it can be used on top of other colours. So I've got this petal here that I painted earlier and it's bright yellow and we're going to put another colour onto it. So again I'm going to put the water over the whole area and the reason I'm putting it over the whole area is that just water alone can leave a mark. Now it's important that you let the layers dry so that first layer of paint it's important that you let it dry because otherwise you'll find it'll just disturb too much when you put the second layer of water on so there we are I've got my layer of water on top of my layer of paint I'm going to clean the brush and then I'm going to go in with something darker let's go mad let's go for a bit of purple it may actually turn slightly brownish because obviously you're layering colors but we'll go pretty dark with it so I've got this nice purple here and we'll pop some of that in there so you can imagine um, things like violas and pansies you can get these beautiful colors working one with the other you do have to consider color combinations so um, if purple and yellow make brown which they often do that's something you know your purple will go, go slightly brownish but there you can see we're managing to drop that second color in and we've got that nice soft edge so this method here is the method I want you to default to most of the time. Now what happens if you forget to pre-wet the paper and you start applying the paint and you think oh crikey I wanted to blend that edge out that's what we're going to look at next. So for this method what we're going to do is we're going to drag a paintbrush um, along the edge of the area that we've painted. So what I'm going to do is apply paint and then I'm going to drag a damp paintbrush along the edge to uh, to blend out the edge as i said this is much trickier not as easy to do so let's go for let's actually go for the shadow color again so i'm going to put my shadow in here and i wanted to fade out that edge but oh goodness i forgot to wet the paper first so how do i do it so first of all i'm going to make sure that's nicely applied and then very quickly while it's still wet rinse my paintbrush clean water semi dry the paintbrush and then I'm going to drag the paintbrush along the edge. Now you'll notice I'm pushing down on the paintbrush to splay the bristles out. Because ideally what you're looking for is for the paintbrush to be half on the paint and half on the dry paper. It takes a bit of practice this one, especially when you're working in a small area. If you've got a large area like you would have in a sky for instance, then it's much better to sweep across with a flat brush. But you can see that if I sweep across with a flat brush here, what I'm going to end up doing is coming off the edge. So you can't always use the brush that you'd like. So I'm going to do you a, uh, a drawn explanation of it. So what we did here, I've got a hair. What we did here, it's amazing I've got any hair left, it's always falling out, is we had paint here. So let's say that this is our area of paint. And then what we did was we got a paintbrush that we had clean water on, but it wasn't drippy wet, it was just damp. And then we dragged the paintbrush along this area here. So the paintbrush was dragged along half of the uh, half of the paint and half of the paper. 
We did it a couple of times. You might find you have to go up a little bit further and look how well it's worked. Now on a hot day, you're gonna to have to be very, very fast with that method. So here we've got the first method, which worked really well and was really easy. And then we've got this second method for if you forget to, to, uh, to wet the paper, or if you only decide at the last minute that you want to soften that edge. This one is not as easy to do on a prior layer of paint, simply because dragging the paintbrush is going to uh, is going to lift the paint underneath. But this for a, a white area of paper, this one works pretty well. So now let's look at the very last method and that's to use cotton wool. Now what we're doing in this last method is we've applied some paint. And not only did we forget to pre-wet, we even let the whole thing dry. So this is useful for when you've got something that's a mistake. So imagine you're painting clouds and you meant to do some lovely soft, soft cloud shadows like this but in areas they dried really hard edged like this. So this is a way of softening a, uh, an edge after it's dry. Now I've also got a video for 10 different um, techniques of adjusting your paint after it's dry. So um, I'll link to that up the top there. It's, it's probably the most important watercolor video I've done because it shows you how to correct a lot of mistakes. Now, what I've got here is cotton wool and I have put water on it but I have squeezed out as much as I can. You don't want wet cotton wool because all you'll do is make a different mark further in. So you want cotton wool that really is barely, barely damp. And what you're gonna do now is you're gonna do tiny, tiny circles and you're not pressing hard at all, quite lightly. And what we're doing is rubbing. Now, depending on the quality of your paper depends on how long you can get away with rubbing for. I'm just gonna to go to a slightly drier area here. If your paper's quite cheap, and this one is not an expensive paper, it's a practice paper, you may find eventually that the uh, the paper starts to, to rub and come up. So there we are, I've, uh, I've managed to soften that edge out. As I said, it's not a perfect result, it's not as good as the other methods, but it's certainly very workable, and if you've got tiny hard edges in your cloud shadows, then this is the one to use. Clean cotton wool, clean water, and squeeze every drop that you can out of it. If you have difficulty squeezing, if you have arthritis or something like that, what you can do is just place your damp cotton wool between um, some paper towel or some rag like that and perhaps put your foot on it so that um, you squeeze out that moisture or get a friend to do it for you. And then rub, 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 tiny circles, and there you go, you've got your faded edge. So that's three methods of getting lovely, soft, blended, faded edges without any hard lines. So I hope you found this video really useful and it's going to help you with your own watercolour painting techniques. If you found it helpful, please press the like button. Um, it does tell the YouTube algorithm that it's a good video, which means they'll push it out to, uh, to more people, which helps my little channel to grow a little bit. So um, also consider subscribing to the channel. I've got loads more watercolour tips and techniques as well as um, business training, social media, online selling for artists, and also some, uh, some mixed media painting and drawing, a little bit of everything art related on this channel. And you can watch another one of my videos right now.